Welcome to the Holy Family Parish and to this celebration of the sacrifice of the Mass. Today is Pentecost Sunday. The Mass is being offered for Edith Cocott. A heartfelt thank you to the volunteers of our Take and Eat ministry who spent every Saturday since March shopping, prepping, cooking, and delivering meals to our elderly and homebound. Thank you also to um, those who have made monetary donations. Take and Eat will resume its regular once a month meal schedule in June. Volunteers are always welcome. <clears throat> we have received many Father's Day Mass uh, envelopes. If you did not submit one, but would like to, please contact the office. Father's Day is June 21. A reminder that the church is now open during the day for prayer. Please feel free to stop in and pray. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament continues on Wednesdays from 12 noon to 6 p.m., concluding with the benediction at 6. Confessions are being heard in Classroom 2 in the Parish Hall uh, on Wednesdays from 5 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. and Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 3.45 p.m. Please stand as we prayerfully celebrate the mysteries of our faith. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. When a time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to, the, to them tongues as of fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement. They asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galilean? Then <clears throat> how does each of us hear them in, in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judean, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the name God who produces all of them is everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As the body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. We were all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. There is one thing I forgot to mention before Mass began. After Mass, when we distribute Holy Communion, when you come up, please leave your kneelers down. That way we'll know where you were sitting, and then we'll only have to spot clean the church and not do the whole thing. So when you leave your pew, please leave the kneeler down so we'll know where to, to, uh, to clean. Language is defined as a human method of communication using words, spoken or written, 
uh, signs, gestures, symbols. It has seven different functions. And I've been up since 4.30 this morning, so if I get these right, this will be a Pentecost miracle. Seven functions of language. Expresses our needs, forms relationships, tells us what to do. When in language, we discover new things. It's personal, imaginative, and representational. Ooh, seven, not bad. But also, thank you. <laughs> But also, when we, it's not just about words, right? You know, when we communicate with one another, there's also that which lies underneath, the motivation to communicate. Attitudes, feelings, thoughts, right? Joy, sorrow, gladness, guilt, shame, love, devotion. There's also that which is in us that's being communicated, right? That's why I find it interesting, St. Paul's statement in the second reading in his letter to the Corinthians, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one can say, no one can speak, no one can utter, no one can communicate that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now this is an interesting statement because first and foremost, the divine name of God, the name that was given to Moses in the burning bush, Yahweh, I am, was so sacred to the Jews that no one was allowed to speak the name of God but the high priest once a year. So they, they came up with different names for God. Adonai in Hebrew, Kyrios in Greek meaning Lord. The divine name was so sacred to them, only God had the authority to speak his name and to those whom he gave permission, namely the high priest. So you can see how in John's Gospel, when Jesus identifies himself as Yahweh, why well, the Jews get a little miffed at him. Why? Because he's identifying himself as God. So what does St. Paul say? No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. In one sense, St. Paul is saying that Jesus' name is synonymous with the divine name, Yahweh. But also, but if no one can say his name except by the Holy Spirit, then God has to first communicate that to us. God first has to give us his own permission to be able to speak his name. He has to communicate to us and in us. And now the question is, well then, how does God communicate? What is the language of God, right? And if language is defined as a human method of communication, what is the divine method of communication? I see it in none other than the sacraments of the church. Right? Think about that for a second. In the sacraments of the church, God communicates himself to us. In the sacraments, we form personal relationship with God. In the sacraments, we discover something new about him. We form a relationship. We discover something new. He tells us what to do and how to, how to live. In confession, think about this. We express our needs, our sins, our desires, our, our the, the bad stuff. And what does God do? But he breathes his forgiveness into our souls. In Holy Communion, we literally take God into ourselves. He communicates to us and in us via the sacraments of our church, right? Baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, confession, anointing of the sick, priesthood, and marriage. This is the language of God. This is the divine method of how he communicates to us and in us. Because in these ways, he wants to get into us. But that requires another piece of the puzzle. That requires our willing participation in the sacraments. We can't accept one sacrament and not another. Right? We can't say that the Eucharist is God but deprive ourselves of confession. It doesn't work like that. This is God's method of communication and we have to be willing to receive the language of God. And that's when the fire of the Holy Spirit comes to rest on our souls in the same way it did on that first Pentecost day 
on the birthday of the church, when the apostles received the fire of the Holy Spirit, they received that fire and they went out and spread that fire. And that's the point. When the Spirit of God gets into us, when he lights his fi the fire of his love into us, that fire has the ability to spread. That is when we can say things like, Jesus is Lord, because he is in us. Remember, it's not just words that we're communicating. It's the belief, the conviction, the passion, the love, the devotion of our God that is in us. I had my first fire of the season the other day in my fire pit. What happens when you put wood on fire? It catches, it spreads. When we get close to each other, well, maybe not right now, but when we get close to each other, right, fire spreads. It has the ability to catch and spread. How many people were converted that first Pentecost day? This is why we speak the name of God in such a way with reverence, with love, with devotion. Now do you understand why the second commandment is the second commandment? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Because if he do, he's not in you. But if the word of God is in you, if he is in you, then that fire can spread by one simple phrase. Jesus is Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us together now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we turn to God, our Heavenly Father, now with our needs, the needs of the church and that of the whole world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit Give them discerning hearts to know his will and the courage to follow it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the troubled areas of our world, may God's grace descend upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify us and transform us for the good of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the clergy of the Franklin County Deanery, especially for all of our priests. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, uh, our loved ones who have died, may they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for Edith Cocott. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, hear the prayers that we bring to you this day that come from the depths of our hearts. Grant them in accord with your most holy will. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, 
and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of her Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei your Son, our Lord. We, your servant and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, 
you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. May God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of the one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.